In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the camera tracker inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio to create your own DIY UFO footage. Now, what we're going to be doing here today is not available if you don't have the studio version in this program. There is a free program that has a really powerful camera tracker in it. And if you guys want to see a tutorial from me about that, please let me know in the comments down below because... I would like to make one, but I'm not sure how much interest there would be. So if that's something that you would want to see and you don't have the studio version of Resolve, or even if you do and you want to see a different way to do it, let me know in the comments. So what we're going to be doing here is using this clip to add a UFO to up here in the sky, probably above this pipe right there. We'll just pop it up there. And in order to do that, we're going to go into the fusion page here. Once you're here, go ahead and hit shift space to pull up the select tool menu, find your camera tracker, go ahead and add that into the line. If it doesn't pop in on the line, go ahead and hold shift, drag it in there and drop it just like that. Now that we're here, it's really important that you know about your camera in order to get like a really high quality track, right? Unfortunately for me, I shot this with my um, 2020 iPhone SE and there's not a lot of information about their camera, like the internal specs of it online. So I found that it has a 3.99 millimeter focal length when it's zoomed all the way out. Uh, so I'm going to pop that in and that's all I have. The better you can do on this stage here, the better your track is going to do, the easier it's going to be for your computer to actually do it. Once you're happy with your camera settings, or at least where you can be with your camera settings, go ahead and pop into the track menu here. Now, in here, we have detection threshold, which is going to determine how high quality of an actual point it's going to grab and call a tracking marker. So if this is really low, it's going to grab just anything it wants. And if it's really high, it's going to grab only the best points. So we need to have a mix of those because we need to have at least eight points. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Minimum feature separation is how far apart those points need to be. So if you have a ton of points, it's going to take forever to track. So maybe you want this to be a little bit higher. So it's only using, say, the best one within a certain radius. Then you bring that down and they can be really close together. Like up in the trees here, when I was doing some experiments with this, I did detection threshold low and feature separation low, and this whole tree was just made of dots, and it took hours for the track to complete. It was crazy. So we're just gonna leave those both where they are. Um, dial that in for you with what you have. If you have a lot of like really bold points that are very easy to track, then you can have a larger separation and your detection threshold can be a little bit higher because you don't want to necessarily get too many low quality tracking points in with that. So now that we have these set where we want them, we're just going to click auto track. It's going to find as many points as it can with those parameters and it's going to track them. So if we check that out, these little tails show direction and the dot on the tail and sometimes in the middle of the tail, shows the actual point being tracked. So now that we have the track, we're not done. Next, we need to actually solve this. So now it sees what's going on, but it's not sure what the camera is doing just yet. So we're going to go into our solve options here, and we're going to take our acceptable solve error and just turn that way down. The higher this is, the more it's going to be able to diverge. The lower this is, the closer it's going to have to be to those points. So the lower you can do, the better, but it takes a lot more processing power and a lot more work from your computer and a lot more time for you to wait. So I'm going to put that somewhere, I don't know, 0.4, because this doesn't necessarily need to be perfect right now. I'm not trying to pull off a hoax. I'm trying to teach you guys how to use the camera tracker in Fusion. So we're going to bring our maximum track error down, and then we're going to bring our maximum solve error down. And then once we're happy with these settings, just ignore all this stuff while you're learning, go ahead and click solve. Now this is going to go through each individual frame and solve what the camera is doing during that frame of video. So once this is done, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, so we have our track here. We go through, we can see all those points are pretty sticky. Uh, we can see that our average solve error is 42. That is incredibly bad. So we're gonna have some really gnarly shaking when we bring our 3D model in. Um, but like I said, I don't know that much about this camera. So that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do with this right now. 
Um, I could mess with these settings a little bit more, bring our solve error down, bring these down. But again, since this is just a demonstration of the actual tool we're using, we're just going to call that a day because you can spend as much time as you want in here dialing this in, getting that as close to zero as possible. So if you need it to be perfect, play with your settings. Then once you have that, once your solve is done, we're going to export this. So we'll go into the export tab here and then we'll click export. And that's going to bring in a bunch of nodes into our node web down here. So we're going to bring these up toward everything else, just like that. And then we're going to take our camera tracker out of this line and we're going to cut that. And then we'll bring our camera tracker renderer here into our media out. So if we put merge 3D1 here in our first viewer by pressing the number one with it selected, you can see the point cloud in there, which is where all of our tracking points are. You can see our image plane, which is our actual image. And over here, you can see our ground plane. And if you're putting something on a desk or something like that, you wanna make sure that ground plane is sitting right on that desk. But since this is gonna be in the sky, it isn't gonna matter so much. You can't even see the ground in the shot, so we're good. After this, I'm going to add in one more Merge 3D, and that is so that I can connect this FBX scene that I'm about to import. I put this together in Blender in like two or three minutes, so please forgive the jankiness. Uh, we'll zoom out. It's down here. Grab it. Pull it up here. And then I'm going to connect it to that merge that we just made. And we can move it around and change it with this merge that is connected when we add it in. So go transform, bring that scale way down. Oh, it looks like it did not import all the way or no. Okay, this is not connected properly. There we go. Suzanne is now safe for space travel. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit smaller so we can have it look like it's in the sky up there. Like I said, with that low quality solve from our lack of knowledge about the camera, as well as a few other things going on in there, this is probably going to have some motion in it that we don't like. But the better your solve is, the better that motion is going to be. So if we just check that out right now, it's sitting there and as the camera moves, it leaves the screen, it comes back onto the screen. You can see a little bit of jitter going on in there, but for the most part, this is moving separate from our actual camera. And you could very easily imagine that if that track was good, it would look like that thing was stuck in the sky. And if you want to, you can go ahead and add keyframes to this too. So we'll set one here, go to forward, and then bring that scale down to zero. Now, if we look at that, you can see that it just zoop, zoop, vanishes, zips off into the sky. So if you want to make your own DIY UFO footage, this is a great way to do that. Or if you want to 3D model a bottle, set it on a desk, this is a great way to do that too. If you guys want to see more about this, I would love to make more tutorials about this, but um, I wasn't sure how much interest there would actually be in this topic. So I wanted to start with an introduction to the tool because I want to gauge what you guys think. So if you want to see more videos about this, more in-depth videos about this, please let me know in the comments down below. And again, those of you that don't have the studio version and you want to see a free way to do this really, really well, let me know that in the comments as well. Thank you guys for watching and I appreciate any of the input you give me. I'll see you in the next one.